Welcome to the Talking Toughness series of podcasts, where we examine the mental toughness concept with guests from a wide range of sectors, illustrating that our mental approach to what happens to us and around us matters for all of us. Our guests come from the worlds of business and public service, education, social mobility, sport and health. They all share their experiences and their observations about the factors that have enabled them to survive and to thrive on their journey through life. Many guests have gone further and incorporated the concept into what they do as coaches, trainers, managers and leaders, helping others to thrive in their turn. Their experiences are valuable to those of us who strive to do the same. Our guest today is Maya Mata. Maya is someone that I've known for many, many years. She's a people development professional, an educator and an author with a particular interest in customer service, where she is acknowledged as something of an expert. Well, we deal with a lot of trainers and coaches from around the world, and we would certainly position Maya up there amongst the very best. Now, originally part of the award-winning Emirates Airlines service training team, Maya has built on that to take a unique approach and her 20 plus years of working in the service industry, mostly in the Middle East and Southeast Asia, to a wide variety of organizations. Maya can also claim to be one of the early adopters of the Four Seas Mental Toughness concept, especially in the Gulf region, where she has worked with AQR for more than 12 years. She's also the first master trainer for the concept in the region and has worked on several projects which features prominently the use of the concept. Now, in addition, Maya has a master's degree in coaching psychology and is known to be passionate about helping individuals and organization. Now, this is her strap line, changing the doing by changing the viewing. She's the author of an Amazon bestseller called Lasting Impressions, a framework for consistent service delivery. Welcome, Maya. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And how how are you? And how's family? Everything is great. <laughs> family growing super fast, <laughs> but everything is great. Thank you for asking. Well, let's go straight to your core level of interest. This is your interest in uh, customer service. Can you tell us a little bit about why you think that's really important and what you you think you're bringing to the to the idea uh, initially my journey started to follow my childhood dream to become cabin crew to travel the world and then during the process i discovered that i enjoy a lot serving others and not everybody can serve from the heart many people can serve but very few people can be generous in serving and to be able to be generous when serving it needs to happen from the heart and this is where many uh, elements can contribute into the process of serving in a generous way such as your mindset such as your emotional state such as some traits of your personality that can position you as better in terms of delivering a service than others so i personally found that uh, bringing psychology into the service industry is very important and much needed. When I first started designing some of my courses and some of my programs, I used to immediately go through the skill sets that are required. What kind of skills is required to do this, to do that, you know, communication. Now I have done a huge shift in the way I deliver the programs because I focus as the first step into setting the right mindset. People who do not have the right mindset to serve can never serve from the heart and can never achieve excellence. The reason is, please stop me because I can talk forever about this. <laughs> you keep on going. <laughs> I will keep on going. The reason is when it comes to you know, customer service, it's easy to get it right to serve customer service. I mean, we have some amazing uh, 
petrol stations around us, they deliver amazing service. You come, they help you, they clean your windshield, they put fuel in the car, they bring the machine to your car. They deliver a great customer service, yeah? However, when we talk about customer experience, you need to upgrade the game a little bit because customer service is the functionality of the service. But when you talk about customer experience, you talk about how the customer feel after availing for, for this service or after you know experiencing your brand or experiencing the service or you know uh, the product that they are purchasing. So when we go to discussing the feeling, this is where we go into uh, the customer experience. And to reach excellence, it's not enough to deliver a quality product. Many people, they know the, the product, they can copy the product, they can deliver a good product, quality product. But people do not just want the product. People, they want efficiency. You order something on Amazon, it's true, it's like Amazon or any other uh, mean of uh, you know uh, online shopping. You want the product to come as quickly as possible. You get upset if it's more than a week now. We used to wait one month for a product. Now, if it's more than a week, you don't want, you want to buy premium so you can get it the next day or the third day. You don't want to wait. You want it to come in the right packaging. So efficiency is very important. People do not want to wait. People do not want to waste energy on purchasing a service or a product. So they want quality. They want efficiency. Fine. If you deliver those two, you're already a winner. But what will make people come back again and people really become your company or your brand ambassador that they will rave about you and talk about you to other people is when you achieve the emotional connection with the client or with the guest or with the person availing for your service. And this is the most difficult part in service. Connecting on an emotional level with people is the most difficult part. And to be able to do that, you need the people with the right mindset that is going to deliver your service. I think that's so interesting, Maya. Just the, the sense, because I, I would never really give customer service, customer experience a whole, a whole lot of thought other than, you know, kind of being the customer, being on that receiving end, getting the text message to rate our service that kind of thing um when you talk about mindset is there a is there an element there of being able to read what the customer wants because i'm uh, i i know it, if we take a restaurant example okay i i quite like the sort of um i suppose without stereotyping too much you know like when if you go into if you go into paris and you get the sort of waiters that are almost a bit rude to you they kind yeah. of just give you give you i would take that over a los angeles hi my name's so and so and it would be my pleasure to serve you today i don't want that because to me that, that i i don't buy that it doesn't appear genuine i think at least at least the parisian restaurants being genuine with me they don't want me they don't like me but at least there's an <laughs> honesty to that um <laughs> and uh Whereas, of course, somebody else would be completely different. They want to be kind of waited on much more. Is, is that part of the mindset? <clears throat> Excuse yes, me, course. being able to understand that. Of course. And this goes back to the flexibility and to the resilience of the staff member that is delivering the service. Um, we, have a, we have a challenge here in the region um, that we have people delivering the service in a very robotic way. OK, because they are scared of making a mistake of doing something that they're not supposed to do. You know, they stick to their SOPs, they deliver it and, you know, by heart. But this is not what the customer wants. And this is not what will achieve the emotional connection. Understanding the guest or the customer, I like to call them guests because you know it's like when you're welcoming people, when you're serving really in a generous way as if you are welcoming people to your home. When you are serving the customer, it's, you cannot always be right. Mm. Because what you need to do is to deliver what the guests value. 
And this is the challenge because what John value in a service is different than what dog value in a service is different than what Maya value in a service. However, you cannot talk about service excellence without talking about standards. Why? Because you need a certain measurement, you need a certain process. And if you constantly need to develop, you need to be able to measure. So that's why there should be some framework that is going to be based on. However, the staff member delivering the service needs to understand where they can bend the rules, where they can adjust, where they can modify, and to adapt to the customer. And this is the challenge here, because people need to learn how to adapt to the different customers' needs. I give you an example. You go, uh, let's say we take first class uh, service in Emirates. It's the most sophisticated service on an airline to deliver first class service, right? So you have the most expensive caviar, the most expensive champagne, and the crew are so trained to deliver all of the service. However, you have a passenger that comes on board who pays more than $10,000 for a trip, let's say long haul trip, who just want to sleep all of the flight. Mm -hmm. So this kind of passenger, if you literally bang a tray or make a noise in the galley, or in the kitchen while preparing, he's going to come and be super upset because what he value is the quietness, is the time for rest, is their sleeping time. They don't care about the caviar. They don't care about the champagne. So here comes the thing. You learn the standards. However, you need to learn as well to be adaptable and flexible and resilient to adapt to the different kind of customers when you are serving them. And this is a skill as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can see that. I, I I was nodding along, but I was thinking, uh, I don't know what it's like in first class on Emirates flight. I'm afraid. <laughs> I try to make you visualize it. <laughs> but I can I can picture it. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I think that's interesting. And a couple of times there, you, you talk about the the resilience as well. And I, I suppose it, it it would kind of be quite stressful when you you thrown off the, the routine as I suppose is sort of habitual in, in customer service really where um the way that you expect things to go it doesn't quite pan out that way and you've got to be responsive and stuff like that so how does that kind of resilience and uh, your kind of understanding of the uh, mental toughness uh, kind of four C's model and stuff how does that Kind of uh, I want experience. to I want to take you through an experience, a case study. Actually, I wrote about it in my book, this case study. I trained a um, touristic attraction in the region. And before I designed the program, I did an assessment for their, you know, customer journey, for their employees. And I've conducted a sample uh, test with the mental toughness. Uh, where we looked at the four C's um, and we found out this facility was open for a year and a half without uh, leadership in place, without SOPs, without formal training. So basically the staff were left, uh, you know, organically to, to, <laughs> to manage the place and to lead it and to deliver customer service. And we found out that there are two areas that requires development. One of them is the challenge because the staff were so laid back at one point and so complacent. So they were not really taking on any challenge or challenging themselves or going out of their way to satisfy the customers. And the second one we found was uh, the level of confidence. Because they haven't been trained and they haven't been prepared and they haven't been provided with the right toolbox, their level of confidence was not up to the level where they can deliver face-to-face -face customer service, premium customer service that was expected from them. So our intervention focused on these two areas to help the staff, you know, challenge themselves more so they can, you know, bring their game to an upper level and excel more and push their boundaries and leave their comfort zone, if you want to, to make it in a simpler way, as well as developing their confidence level to be able to deliver a premium service and be more confident about their abilities. So this is one of the, we focus on it and it actually changed from the development program that we've done. 
But what I would like to talk about with you here related to the resilience, one of the things that I found in organizations, especially the last two, three years, is that people have difficulties dealing with problems in the customer service when things go wrong, mm -hmm. you know? So when there is a customer complaint, when there is a customer being upset, when there is a difficult customers, I find people have difficulties managing this. And this is regardless of any position, whether it's a supervisor or a manager or an entry level staff. So I came up with a, with an um, uh, analogy, if you want, you know, and this was inspired by COVID because we used a lot of PPE during COVID, personal protective <laughs> equipment. So when I was writing the book, because I wrote the book in COVID, I wrote something about personal protective equipment, but your service PPE. So if you are in the service industry, you need some shields, you need some support system to protect you when you are handling customers, when you're when things go wrong, when there is problems, when there is complaints. And this is where I talked about three elements. So the first P stands for psychological safety. Providing psychological safety for staff when they make a mistake, not to hide it, when they make a mistake to attempt to correct it, when they make a mistake to talk about it. Uh, when they make a mistake to face it with courage, when they make a mistake to take it as an opportunity for change, to adopt a growth mindset, fine, I did this mistake, how can I prevent it in the future? How can I tell people about it? How I can share it with my uh, colleagues? So, and this is where resilience plays place because a resilient person can accept, you know, failure, but turn it around into opportunity, right? So here we talk about the psychological safety and creating psychological safety for employees so they can handle mistakes, so they can report mistakes, so they can be um, innovative in overcoming mistakes, in problem solving. They can come up with new ideas on how we can solve problems. And this cannot happen if there is no psychological safety. Mostly it's provided by leadership and is led by the leadership in the organization. The second element is creating a processes and service recovery process. So the staff, when they make a mistake, they need to know what to do. Like so many times I ask people, when a customer complains to you, what do you do with this complaint? Sometimes the staff, they don't know what to do. They say, oh, I apologize. No, sorry, apologizing doesn't help anymore. You need to take actions. And what sort of actions are you taking? And the third element, which, which is elevated skills and confidence, and here we have the toolbox of people where they need to have enough emotional control or emotional management, if you want to call it. They need to know that they can make things happen. They need to feel empowered to make a decision, which is your first element, control. And then the second element is committed, committed to the organization and goal, committed to the team, committed to achieve the goals. And another C is to challenge themselves, challenge themselves by coming up with new ideas, by doing things out of the box. You know, it's not always about giving the client a free ticket. Some of the clients are very affluent. They just need to be heard. It's not always about giving free gifts. I don't want your free gifts. I want you to tell me what you're going to do about it. You know, the other day I had a small piece of plastic in my food. And then I called the staff. It was a wonderful service. The food was so beautiful. Everything was great. But I had a small piece of plastic in my uh, plate. And then I called the staff. I said, hey, listen, I found this in my plate. And please, I don't want to complain about, I don't want anything, but this can kill someone. And I'm lucky that I didn't swallow it. The staff apologized and he called the chef. The chef came and he said, listen, this is our mistake. We have this new type of... Uh, uh, prawns that comes with this shell and he explained to me and he apologized and then they said oh the food is on us I said I don't want free food I just want you to tell me and promise me that no one else is going to be injured from that you know mm -hmm. and this is all what I wanted and so many times the customer just want to be heard but you need to have the staff that is willing to listen and then taking on the challenge of dealing with different people it's not easy I call mm -hmm. something uh, in the book, I refer to it as the silent dignity. 
sometimes people they talk, they take things personal when the customer complain they feel you know they're they're being attacked but the customer doesn't care who you are doesn't know you and this is difficult to get people to understand that you keep your dignity you keep your self respect not you didn't lose anything yes you should not allow someone to treat you bad yes you should have your boundaries if the customer cross the limit you call the security to protect yourself however you should not take things personal and this mm. is very difficult and this very few people can actually uh, handle that in the customer service and then if you're not confident how can you deliver excellence if you're not confident with your product knowledge if you're not confident to know what you're doing if you're not confident when interacting with people how can you deliver excellence how can you face people here you go i covered the four uh, <laughs> you, you've done a fantastic job maya i'm just listening to you I could, well we will probably cut and select bits of this for years to come that's a wonderful little trip around the four c's 